Hello. In the last episode, I recapped some of the motion stuff that I had to do, and I deleted some of the stuff that was really archaic uh, from all of the episodes I skipped. But there's one thing we didn't do, and that's we didn't actually set the slime up to attack. So let's go ahead and do that this episode. Here in our animator, we have this blend tree, which is a great uh, maneuver tree. It actually has all of the motion that we need baked into it. Um, that might not be the best solution for every monster, but it works great for the slimes. But mm, the slime isn't going to be always maneuvering, is it? So down here we've got a lot of parameters that we have uh, just kind of built. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the attack in here. So if I go down to slime, the sli the, I'm using the slime2 file, and I drop the attack in here. And then I can just make a transition like this and change this to, uh, rather than exit time, that makes no sense, uh, attack being true. So what this says is, while we're maneuvering, if attack is ever true, you can attack. In fact, no matter what you're doing, if attack is changed to true, attack. And that includes, like, if you're in mid-attack and attack is changed to false and then changed back to true, you'll attack. So it's not the it's not really the best way to do things for complicated creatures. But for something like a slime, it's okay to suddenly go into an attack pose because who who cares, right? Um but we don't want to stay in the attack pose forever. So we're going to go out to the maneuver if the exit time is out, if the exit time is done. But we also don't want to force the slime to continue through with the entire attack even if the slime doesn't want to continue attacking. So we're going to create a second transition. And this one is going to be if attack is false. So if attack gets turned off, we'll stop our attack. Simple enough, right? So no matter what state we're in, we'll go to the attack animation if we decide to attack. And if we're done attacking or we don't want to attack anymore, we go back to the maneuver animation. Very simple stuff, right? But there is nothing that controls this attack boolean, is there? Actually, there is. Uh, the attack boolean is controlled by this attack zone thing I created. So we're just going to drop this into our other slime. There we are. And I'll introduce you to it. So the attack zone is just a... Uh, there we go. The attack zone is just a ball. It's an invisible ball. And what happens is if you're inside of that ball, you're going to get attacked. So how does this work? Well, it's a sphere collider that's just a trigger. And then I've got this object called the attack trigger script, which we'll go into right now. This is a pretty simple script, and it's a good way to do basic attacks. So basically what's, what it says is, first off, you need to have the animator specified. And then down here in update, it says, if we're not attacking, maybe consider attacking. Oh wait, that's the mob AI. What am I doing? Sorry, this is the attack trigger. Uh, we have the attack animation name and the body, which is a mob AI, not an animation. Sorry about that. I was looking at the wrong file. We have the body, so we reference the body. And then down here in update, we do nothing because this is not update related. <laughs> in fact, we should just delete these. Here in on trigger enter, we check and see whether or not it is the player that has entered into our um, attack sphere. And if it is, we attack. And we know what kind of attack we're going to launch because we specify the name of the attack here. And that's actually the Boolean in the animator. So if we look in the animator, you can see how we've got uh, the attack boolean, and that will take us into the attack. We could have like 85 different attacks, uh, each with their own set of animations, and each which is controlled differently. So we would just give them different names and plug those names in. It would be pretty straightforward. But in this case we only have one, and it's called attack. Down here we say, well if the player is not in that ball anymore, uh, you can stop attacking, it's okay. Very, very straightforward. So over here in the scene, we do have to drop the slime onto our body because currently it was the disabled slime over here that we don't actually want. So I'm going to save that and hit play. And you can see that it turns towards us like before. And as it walks towards us, it's eventually going to decide that it's going to attack. And that is the incredibly terrible attack animation that I currently have. Uh, and I figured I'd leave it incredibly terrible just so that I could show you uh, how awful it looked before I put in the uh, uh, animations. In the before between this episode and the next episode, I will be fixing that attack animation to actually accomplish something. Um, 
I could actually do it right now. Sure, why not? Here is our file. We're going to open the attack animation. Here it is. And we're going to make sure that we move forward a lot when we attack. So here we draw back, right? And then we spring forward. And I want this spring forward to contain a lot of forward motion. So at the end of this, we are going to end up, select the root bone, we're going to end up, say, here. Now the only problem is, poof! So we've got to put that root motion in a little bit more, uh, you know, so like this. Is that correct? Oh, nope. It needs to be further, so we'll just move it further. We want to have a lot more root motion in here, so let's just put in as much root motion as we would like. And it's going to be a really sudden feeling. This attack is going to come off real sudden, and that's fine. So, wham! That should look good, so let's save that. And now when we go back over into our uh, Unity file, it'll automatically update that animation. The animation exists already, so we don't have to worry about creating it. See how that actually has an attack that can might reach us? But our radius is too far, so we will bring this ball in just so that it doesn't try and attack us when we are nowhere near it. The other issue with this is that it doesn't uh, it doesn't smoothly change its animations. So you can see how there are occasional moments where it like flickers and does crazy stuff. And that's because the blend tree is um, being tossed around by our uh, really, really aggressive um, setting of this animation. You see how we say uh, set float turn negative one, one or zero? That means that if we ever want to turn left, we do this massive left turn for like a tenth of a second. And so we switch rails entirely over into that animation. And that we'd actually like to blur that together. So we're going to create our own uh, float turn equals zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up lurping between what we would like uh, and what we when what we what we're gonna have so here we're gonna put this down here we're gonna say set it equal to turn no problem right but here we're gonna say uh, float target turn equals zero and we're gonna say well in that case our target turn can be negative one or our target turn can be one easy enough. And then we can lerp between them. So we can say turn equals float dot lerp. Oh, is it not float dot lerp? What is it? Um, can't be turn dot lerp. No. Was it math f dot lerp? It, there it is. Turn. And then our target turn. And then however fast we would like to, to move between them. We can go quite fast. So we're going to do time dot delta time times 10. Meaning that it will take uh, only a fraction of a second to transition between the turning and unturning animations. All we really need to do is have it strong enough that we get a good idea of, of you know, we have, it, we have it so that there are a couple of frames of transition rather than it just randomly skewing off all of a sudden. So let's hit play and let's see whether that cleans our animations up at all. Well, it is cleaning up our animations a little bit. It's not perfect. Partially because when it goes into that attack posture, it really skews. You can see that it's dropping into the ground. We must have an animation where our Y uh, axis is, um, our Y bone motion is being adjusted funny. Uh, it might be the attack or the turn. No, I don't think so. Well, anyhow, I don't like that Y motion being adjusted. So we're going to go into the Blender file here. We've got all of these animations, right? And unfortunately, there's no way to automate this. But what we're going to do is we're just going to tell it to bake the Y position into all of these transforms so that we don't have it blur the Y position uh, between the animations. Um, because if we only play half of an animation, we don't want to be lifted up into the air or pushed into the ground. Uh, we want it to uh, revert our, our our Y position to whatever is actually correct. Now the XZ coordinates are fine, 
because if it moves us on the XZ axis, we are happy with that. The, uh, the only real problem is the Y coordinates. And you can see that we're no longer sinking into the ground, which is good. And now all of this is done without any physics at all. There's no physics being applied to the slime in the slightest. And if you're wondering, we can make this slime into a, let's call it the slime prefab. Uh, we can make this into a slime prefab. We're going to delete the old slime prefab and drop the new slime prefab in. And now that it's a prefab, we can go ahead and duplicate it a couple dozen times. If you're wondering how expensive it is to render these slimes, well, I might not do it on a mobile game, but it's actually quite straightforward for a PC game. Um, or, you know, Mac, Linux, whatever. These are all pretty lightweight, and you can see that they kind of slowly squadgle towards you. Obviously, in the actual game, we would be killing these guys. Now, you'll notice that I don't have a HUD over their heads anymore. Well, that's easy enough to fix. I don't remember uh, where I cut off the last episodes, but we did spend a lot of time creating this HUD object, right? The problem is, I don't remember whether I actually explained to you how it will look at the camera all the time. If I didn't, um, let me know and I'll explain it to you properly. But uh, the indicator target is important for where the device gets stuck, and then after that we want the uh, battle status pop-up here and we want the battle unit here. Did we put on two battle units? We did. So let's delete one of these battle units. There we go. Let's put this down. Can we move this down? No? Okay, well whatever. Um, so that should work. go ahead and apply that. Now I'm a little bit worried about these guys. It looks like they all worked out. Let's go ahead and see how that plays. So as you can see they now have all of their health. Uh, if I didn't do the health thing on camera before, let me know. I'll do it on camera again. Um, but it's very straightforward. It's just a look at command. We definitely need to make these a little bit more intelligent. Not the slimes, the HUD. Slimes are fine as unintelligent blobs. You can see why they are the weakest enemy in uh, most RPGs. And that's because even in RPGs where you don't see any, any animations, uh, the slimes, they move pretty much like this. Alright, that's 13 minutes. I'm going to spend the last minute or two uh, putting the rigid body back in. And the reason for that is because I like it when the slimes can't walk through each other and you. So this rigid body, we're going to take it out of kinematic mode, we're going to turn on gravity, but we need a collider, so we're going to go ahead and add one. There are a lot of kinds of colliders, um, but in this specific case, a box collider is best. And this is just about the only time a box collider is best, so don't get um, too box collider happy. So now that we've got a box collider, we have to make sure that it is the right size and shape. Alright, so there we can see that there is a box collider, but it is dramatically below the ground. So we can bring it up like this, and we don't need it to be anywhere near that tall. That should be about right, don't you think? Now up here in the rigid body, we are allowing for rotation, which means our slimes will fall over. Uh, let me go ahead and show you that. Actually, they may not fall over because we're not applying any rigid body forces. But we do want to apply rigid body forces when we strike them. We want to throw them around. Um, and allowing it to rotate means that they will spin on whatever axis they please. So we're going to lock down the rotation. And when we strike them, uh, they will only move according to rigid body. Uh, their rotation, they won't spin or flip. Uh, and that's important because we don't have any animations for them getting up after they get knocked down, so there's no way for them to recover from being flipped on their back. In the next episode, we might actually start working on a player avatar. 
Um, I'm not 100% sure that that's a good idea, because the player avatar is like a 10-episode fiasco. It's going to be really long, uh, because it's probably the most complicated part of the early game. Uh, after that, levels. I'm not sure which one of those is more complicated. Either way, we'll see you next episode.